My name is Jeffrey Lynn, and this is my esteemed colleague, Celestina Madry. Hello. I'm very excited to speak with you here today and talk with all of you about some things that I'm passionate about. What impels me to speak to a room full of people like this is a psychedelic experience I had with psilocybin four years ago. Electronic virtual reality, language, and psychedelics are all very closely related. So I'm going to talk about some points of interest. The first idea I would like to talk about is the distinction between electronic virtual reality and virtual reality. Virtual reality as a concept, similar to how Elliot Edge described uh, in the previous talk, is something that manifested around 10,000 or so years ago. At the invention of agriculture or language, depending on what side of the bed you woke up on today. Um, that actually created a boundary that led into the cascade effect that we now call history, and the missing link to Gaia has been there ever since. Electronic virtual reality is on the brink of transforming our entire civilization. It's the forefront of our global cultural toolkit. We will and are using this technology to transform every industry, culture, and the values that we share as a global organism. I'm interested in electronic virtual reality because of its potential to solve many problems that we face as a society. So, how does EVR create a portal into the imagination? Or infinity, they're the same thing. The ability to build anything from our imagination has some amazing implications that we will come back to later in our talk. The main point I would like to make is that the physical restraints of virtual reality, this world, is much harsher than electronic virtual reality. EVR, the acronym, allows scalability and construct on a scale not even advanced nano engineers or a space mining civilization may be able to provide us. Cyberspace is built with photons of light and is able to transform instantly, and we do not have that kind of tool-making technology in this dimension yet. So how can we evolve our language with virtual reality? A culture can only evolve as fast as its language. Language is very similar to bandwidth because it's information. The higher the bandwidth, the more information you can move from one place to another. EVR has a higher bandwidth than linguistic or written language because of the extra spatial dimension involved. If we can utilize this, it will unlock a potential transformation of society through an empathic understanding of each other. And this is similar to how plants work. Through a network of understanding, they communicate to each other and other species through metabolic activity and exopheromones. Limitless constraints on how we can 3D visualize our language of communication as a multifaceted, hyperdimensional linguistic construct with a, a topology that could potentially be ever-changing. It will be filled with pure understanding and meaning. By combining acoustical sounds to three or four dimensional visual stimuli, we will be able to see what each other means, literally. Perhaps we can look to the ayahuasca experiences. Some shamans in the Amazon rainforest describe their hallucinations from the plants as a 3D textured experience. I'll use an example. So I really enjoyed the part of the song that was red, soft, and velvety, but when you got into the sharp, dark blues, I could really feel the emotion you were trying to portray. And that's how we could describe with English um, an, uh, a visual of the sound. So what does EVR and psychedelics have in common in terms of their effect on language? Well, it's that both things allow one to become much closer to the actual essence of what one is trying to portray. Our internal narratives in our mind that can never, never ever be fully distilled into words or explained to others or even to ourselves. 
No matter how well we describe something or if I try to explain my thoughts in detail to you, it will not be accurately understood as we all have unique internal uh, dictionaries and narratives within our minds. However, if I could show something to you directly, we could overcome the distance that can come with words and gestures. Acoustical linguistic structure is effective at allowing us to overcome the physical limitations that come with needing to show something to you directly. For example, I can't show you in this auditorium how a 553 meter tall structure looks. And me using the phrase, the CN Tower is 553 meters tall to refer to a height that is too vast for me to show you in this auditorium as it overcomes the physical space. The linguistic tile is inferior to the true meaning of the intended understood structure. A more informationally dense, authentic way to communicate the concept of how tall 553 meters is to you would be to model the CN Tower in EVR and look at it. So um, I'm gonna let Tina take over now and she's going to talk about how we can use uh, psychedelics to simulate uh, in virtual reality and what are the implications of that. Fine, thank you, Jeffrey. Um, so, can everybody hear me? Yeah. Awesome. So, when I was a little kid, I always dreamed of being the first person on Mars and I wanted to explore outer space. But now that I'm older, I realize that my desire to explore is actually directed towards inner space. And that's why I am so interested in psychedelic research, because it allows us to enter into our inner space. We live in wonderful times, thanks to organizations such as the multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies, there has been an unprecedented renaissance of psychedelic research that we haven't really seen since the 1950s and 1960s. There has been lots of inspiring research about how psychedelic substances can be used to treat various psychological maladies, such as depression, anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder, etc. Even in people who do not suffer from mental illness, psychedelics have been shown to inspire amazing, miraculous, transcendental experiences that can really shift people's perspectives. This research has allowed us to demonstrate how the emotional content of psychedelic experiences can have therapeutic value. However, there hasn't been quite as much inquiry into the nuts and bolts of the psychedelic experience. And when I'm talking about the nuts and bolts, I'm talking about the raw perceptual data that goes through our perceptual systems during a psychedelic experience. The media tends to portray the contents of psychedelic experiences as being highly delirious, like dragons guarding the fridge and pink elephants talking. So as a result, there's kind of a prevailing stigma when it comes to talking about the perceptual contents of a psychedelic experience as something that can be rationally analyzed and especially under a scientific lens. What really stands out to me during my journey with psychedelic compounds is how the experience seems to be something that is both highly mediated by the imagination, but it's also driven by complex mathematical clockwork. It's just so precise that I couldn't help but wonder whether two people on acid who are looking at the exact same thing will end up seeing the exact same shapes because the same mathematical clockwork is going on with their perceptual system. And this ties into how I think EVR could become a broadly utilized tool in psychedelic science, as EVR allows one to control many of the perceptual variables within the moment of experience. It would be difficult, if not impossible, to determine whether two people sitting in the living room on acid are seeing the same version of the living room due to slight differences in location, lighting, etc. 
However, if you put these people into an EVR experience, you can guarantee that they will be receiving exactly the same visual inputs. And when it comes to the scientific method, that's very helpful for standardizing the variables. However, even if we can standardize the perceptual input, we still hit of a bit of a roadblock when it comes to measuring the perceptual output, which is what is experienced in an accurate manner. Unfortunately, we can't hit record on our brain just yet, and spoken word language is very low bandwidth and is only equipped to describe very basic mathematical and geometric concepts, like squares, circles, triangles, edges. Most people are at a loss for words when they're confronted with the incredibly complex geometry that is present within the psychedelic experience. Phrases such as kaleidoscopic might be able to give us a general depiction of the big picture of what the perceptual output of a psychedelic experience might look like, but the bandwidth with spoken word language is too low to be able to describe all the ma detailed mathematical properties of the perceptual outputs. It's kind of like those fuzzy images of Pluto that we saw in our elementary school science textbooks. We know that Pluto is round, we know its diameter and circumference, but the details of what the surface looks like were fuzzy. However, thankfully, due to scientific research allowing us to develop more advanced uh, telescopes and machines, we were able to get more clear images of Pluto. And I am pretty sure that if we have a dedicated team of people working together with psychedelic research, especially with this new psychedelic renaissance, we can similarly solve the issue of clarity when it comes to describing the subjective contents of a psychedelic experience. And this is why EVR is a promising medium for replicating psychedelic experiences. It eliminates the need to describe to people what one has seen beneath their eyelids using a low bandwidth spoken word medium of communication and allows one to directly design and show the full complexity and detail that it needs in order to be depicted in an accurate manner that can then be put through the scientific method. Why do I think the contents of psychedelic experiences and especially the perceptual contents are so important? It's because I think it's entirely possible that the geometry that we see beneath our eyelids during a psychedelic experience might very well contain insights into the semantic networking of the human biocomputer. The road to completely ironing out the details for a scientifically sound methodology to figure this out is still ahead of us, but I do anticipate that EVR will play a key role in allowing us to do so, and I think the future in this field will be very bright. Awesome, cool. So some of the research that we are conducting on ourselves with EVR and psychedelics is I am building mind palaces in the multiverse. So I'm going to give you my definition of what a mind palace is so you can better understand what I'm trying to communicate to you. A mind palace is a sequence of input memories that can be experienced in EVR. And how this affects subjective memories, I'm not sure. We are coming to you with all of this work unfinished. We have questions, and there needs to be a lot of work that needs to be done in th these fields. Um, so th what I'm doing, actually, is uh, there's this amazing 3D internet software like Janus VR, which allows you to build your websites out of your imagination. You can create everything that we have been talking about this morning uh, and later uh, today at the panel on the internet for anybody to have and be accessible to. You can share it with all of your friends and family, and you can go inside of dreams, hallucinations, rooms, recreations of this world, um, so many different things. So that's uh, what we're doing. And me and Tina have also taken psychedelics and have gone into EVR uh, for hours at a time and have written extensive trip reports 
uh, which are not public, but uh, we, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so we're just gonna tie up some loose ends um, and for future events. So we're gonna be on the panel uh, between 12 and one with uh, Kent Bai and a couple other amazing people. So I, is that in this room? Yeah. Okay, so it'll be in this room. Um, we're also doing a more in-depth workshop, meet and greet kind of thing where you can do Q&A and we can talk more about what we've talked about here uh, between 5 and 6 p.m. I don't believe it's in this room. Uh, it should be on your uh, schedule. So um, I would like to thank Kiram and VRTO for this amazing opportunity. I would like to publicize a charity um, Botanical Dimensions is a nonprofit organization that has created a safe haven for plants with a history of shamanic and psychedelic usage. We think it's very important to have a space for the preservation of these important plants, our friends who have been here long before us and will exist long after us. That's botanicaldimensions.org. Thank you.